Good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to our Passion Week devotional number four, Thursday, uh, April 9th. And so we're glad that you have joined us today. We're glad that you're here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And uh, we would like for you to comment, like us uh, on Facebook. Let us know that you're here. For those who miss it, we do put our devotionals on our YouTube channel, uh, First Baptist Church Harbor Oaks. And so if you happen to miss us today, uh, and you didn't catch the live video, you can always go back and watch us later on YouTube, on our channel. Uh, we're glad you're here. Today's devotional comes from the Gospel of Luke. We've been talking about different passages, uh, uh, stories of, of what Jesus was going through and endured during his Passion Week. Well, today we were in Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 27. Luke 22, 24 to 27. So uh, let me begin reading here. And so... Then a dispute also arose among them about who should be considered the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles dominate them, and those who have authority over them are called benefactors. But it must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever is greatest among you must become like the youngest, whoever leads like the one serving. Who is greater, the one at the table or the one serving? Isn't it the one at the table? But I am among you as the one who serves. Many years ago, there was a boxer. Uh, you remember him, his name was Muhammad Ali, and he's also known as Cassius Clay. And he, he coined a phrase during the time when he was on the national stage boxing, and he was winning a lot of fights. And he coined this phrase. You probably know the phrase, I'm the greatest of all time. I'm the greatest of all time. And he used this phrase to hype himself as well as to intimidate his opponents. And there's no doubt Ali was a great boxer. He was a great fighter. Anyone who saw him fight realized that, knew that, okay? But the phrase that he used, the greatest of all time, that, that's nothing new. That phrase has been used, that question's been asked of who the greatest is for centuries, even millennia, okay? And so in today's passage, we even find the question of who is the greatest of all time, okay? And so Jesus addresses this subject here as he's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to the cross, Who's the greatest of all time? So get this. You see this passage here. It says a dispute uh, rose up among them. This is referring to the disciples. And get this. Picture this. The disciples. The disciples are arguing amongst themselves who's the greatest disciple. Who's the greatest among them? And it's like they don't realize Jesus is standing right there. The greatest among them is right there. This is really not a dispute. I, the thing is, is, it's just it's a wow moment. It's like you really had the audacity to argue and banter about who's the greatest. And so they, they were discussing greatness, and they weren't even considering that the greatest person among them was clearly standing right there, listening to their banter and listening to them go on and on and on. But then he spoke. You see that? You see that? He spoke. In verse 25, he says, The kings of the Gentiles dominate them. Those who have authority over them are called benefactors. So I got a little paraphrase of this passage here. I studied this and read this. This is my paraphrase. So, you know, like, yeah, there it is. My paraphrase is basically Jesus is telling hey, guys, uh, don't you know that the kings of the Gentiles use domination to throw their weight around? These folks use their authority to lord it over others. And they like using the fancy titles. A lot of folks like to be called, they're the master, they're the boss. They're in charge. They like to have that role of authority. He says, it can't be that way with you. He says, on the contrary. Whoever is greatest among you must be like the weakest among you, the youngest he's using here. The leader is to lead by being a servant. He says, everyone would rather be served than to serve, of course. But you have seen me, he says, you've seen me from the beginning that I serve you. Wow. So he says here, okay, you want to talk about the greatest. He says, the Gentiles do this, and they like to have these titles, and they like to have people underneath them, and they like to be... Telling people what to do. There's a phrase, you know, uh, uh, difference between leadership and a boss. A leader leads by example, 
shows the way a boss has to constantly remind people they're in charge. There's a huge difference here. A, lead, a leader, somebody that shows the way. Well, Jesus is saying, Gentiles do this stuff. Other people that don't know me do this stuff. People not of my of the faith, don't, they do this stuff. He says, it's not for you. This is not for my disciples. And this is not this is not what you've been called to do. He says, on the contrary, you want to you want to be great. To be the way to be great is for you to be a servant. You want to be great, you've got to be considered like the least of these. You've got to be willing to serve. You've got to be willing to do the task of a servant. And he and use the example of waiting on tables. I mean, who would who would you rather be? Somebody that's sitting at the table waiting on somebody to serve you? Or would you rather be the waiter that's serving people back and forth? He's like, everybody would like to be the person sitting at the table. He says, but you've seen me, my example from the very beginning. I'm the one that serves you. I'm the one that serves you. You know, Jesus was giving his disciples and us a lesson in leadership. A lesson in leadership. Many can argue about who the greatest is. And yesterday we talked about Tom Brady being the GOAT, the greatest of all time. When it comes to pro football, if he wants to have that title, that's fine. But the greatest of all time, that title belongs to Jesus Christ. Because there's nobody else but him. You see, Jesus, he's the son, he was the son of God. He is the son of God. And yet he led as a servant. Oh, would it be nice to see leadership today that leads by example and leads and shows the way instead of just constantly just telling people what to do. A leader should never ask somebody to do something they wouldn't do themselves. And, and then you see this passage here during Passion Week, we find them having the Lord's Supper. And what do we find Jesus doing right after that? He's washing their feet, a dirty menial task reserved for slaves and we have the son of god washing the disciples feet why it's like that's why is he washing shouldn't it be the other way around he was setting the example guys this is how i want you to lead i want you to lead by serving because that's what i do i lead by serving and we see that as we get closer and closer. Tomorrow is Good Friday. And, and, and Jesus is called in Isaiah, the suffering servant. And tomorrow on Good Friday, we see exactly what that looks like in fine detail. And so he's telling his disciples, guys, I want you to lead just like I lead. By being a servant. And serving others as you serve him, he set the example of true leadership, no doubt. And, the, and now, it's our turn. So, who's the greatest? Well, you, I'm sure you know by now who the greatest is. That, that's Jesus Christ. There's nobody else that can touch him at all. He's the greatest of all time. Muhammad Ali would love to keep that title, but the greatest of all time belongs to no one other than my Savior. Okay? And so, the question that you got to ask yourself is, is that, well, do you want to become great? Well, who doesn't want to become great? But do you want to become great? Jesus says, if you want to become great, in my eyes, he says you need to become a servant. You need to become a servant. And you serve others as you serve him. We serve the horizontal as we serve the vertical. And we serve the horizontal because of what the vertical has done for us. He has served us. Interesting how that's all across pictures. The vertical and the horizontal. You see, Jesus is the suffering servant. And he suffered. And we're going to talk more about that tomorrow. But today, do you want to become a true leader? Do you want to become the greatest? Well, you've got to have the humility that our Lord Jesus Christ had. And that's hard sometimes, but it takes true humility to become a, a servant leader. So today I'm encouraging you to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
It's a can't miss style of leadership. Be like him. Father, I want to thank you for this passage, Lord. And there's no doubt in my mind of who the greatest of all time is. Who the greatest is. It's not Tom Brady. It's not Muhammad Ali. It's you. There's nobody, nobody like you. And Father, today as we see this passage, Lord, disciples arguing about who the greatest disciple is. Father, Jesus once again shares what a real great person does. They lead. They show greatness by being a servant. Father, Jesus set the example. Help us, Father, to follow that example. Help us to be more and more like you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow is Good Friday, and it's going to be a little different as far as our devotional is concerned because it is Good Friday, and we're going to talk about the cross and what that means for you and what that means for me and the magnitude of the cross. So I encourage you to join us tomorrow at 6 o'clock right here on Facebook Live and, and, and check us out. Watch us and, 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 and listen in. Uh, we want, we'd love to have you here, and we look forward to having you here. If you got any questions, feel free to leave us a comment, leave us a message. We'd be glad to get back with you. Uh, once again, we will see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock on Good Friday. Have a blessed day. And remember, Jesus loves you.